Now, for almost two years, Professor Chukuma Soludo, a former governor of Nigeria's Apex Bank, that's the CBN, has been on the saddle as the governor of Anambra State. He was elected on the platform of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA. Governor Soludo says his visionary leadership has brought peace, prosperity, and stability to Anambra State. But there are many who strongly disagree. But however, tonight, our focus is on the journey so far, his achievements, challenges, as well as the myriad of issues. Joining me virtually from Oka, the Anambra State capital, is Dr. Alex Obiogbolu, a political advisor to Governor Chukuma Soludo. Dr. Obiogbolu, thank you so much for joining us tonight. A good afternoon, it's my pleasure. A good evening, it's my pleasure. So let me begin by congratulating the people and government of Anambra State for sailing the ship these two years. Um, in, in your own opinion, how has the journey been so far? Well, uh, one sentence will sum it up, to God be the glory. I mean, the transformation Anambra State has witnessed in the last four months is uh, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, uh, we have to remember where we are coming from and now where we are today. Upon assumption by March 17, 2022, uh, Anambra had one big problem that it asked everyone was on their lips, insecurity. There was a problem of the unknown gunmen holding siege. At least they held siege completely in nine local governments. They were the mountain of refuse. Everywhere was filthy. Contractors hadn't been paid for months to clear the refuse. And everywhere was mountain of refuse everywhere. There was the issue of schools without teachers. Parents under the auspices of PTAs had to recruit teachers that were being paid as Meaning as 10,000 naira just to help teach their children. So you could understand the quality of teachers we were talking about. And this had gone on for years. There were hostels without doctors, without nurses. None of the uh, PhD centers were functional. So this issue, and then the most important was the collapse of the road infrastructure. The road assets in the state had gone comatose. Even with the federal roads were also broken down. So what Mr. Governor did first and foremost was to deal with security. You know, after the engagement with the young men, and then they went after them in the bushes using uh, vigilante services in combination with the security agencies, and we were able to flush them out. Today, we hear of them mainly in two local governments, and these are the border local governments that border us with Imo State. Then you see that the security today, even the Abueros, who were a threat to the commerce of the state, to the NEF Center. Abueros are thugs, stouts who come in extorting money and oftentimes robbing people. That again is gone. It's a thing of the past. And then, of course, we went in from that security, we went into roads. Today, we have more than 450 kilometers of roads have been awarded. As at the time we celebrated our second anniversary on 17th of March, Mr. Governor had commissioned and completed 247 kilometers of road, 247 kilometers, which is basically talking 10 kilometers a month, which had never been seen in Anambra State. Never been seen in Anambra State. And these are quality roads that are bound to last for 20 years. And then, of course, it's not just only touching that, we also went to the health sector. We had over 500 uh, health workers employed, doctors and nurses. And today, the governor is building five brand new hospitals, general hospitals in the state. Five brand new ones. Opoko is about ready. Opoko is a slum, which was not meant to be a slum. It was supposed to be a housing sector supporting the industrial sector. But it turned out into a slum. They had not witnessed any government intervention for decades. And Mr. Governor promised that he was going to turn it around. Today, Opoko has 15 kilometers of road and 12.7 uh, has been completed. Asphalted completely. You have a dual carriage on Oboroku Road, and the road is fenced completely from trading, street trading. Then you have the general hospital coming up that should be commissioned anytime soon. You have in Places that before was difficult to reach. Anambra State should be the only state I know that has 
the capital of a local government inaccessible by road, inaccessible by road. And today, they have already set forth. In the next few weeks, we should be able to drive into Tonzam and commission that road. Mm. You have Dr. Obiogolu, like just permit me to come in here. I know that you're really not what you, you know, uh, seem to be for you, the landmark achievement of the governor. But you mentioned earlier that um, what's, what, where you are now in Anambra State is phenomenal compared to um, what it was before, where, where you're coming from. That's the word that you used. Um, are you saying that in the last two years of, of Governor Soludo's government that he has done far better than the eight years of... Governor Willie Obano and Governor Peter Obi. Certainly, certainly. I mean, <laughs> which government has completed in two years, not in eight years, two years, 247 kilometers of quality road, roads meant to last. You saw the former governor, the roadmaster, at least he was one who held the title of roadmaster, conceding, Dr. Chris Ngigi, conceding that Mr. Governor has done tremendously well on roads. I mean, he was the only one who built roads that last. So, you, I mean, I'm not here to compare them. I'm here to basically tell you that what we have witnessed today is phenomenal. I've, I've been in the state for 32 years. So I can tell you with all honesty. Now, apart from roads, the ability to touch lives also. This is intolerance for poverty. The drive Mr. Governor is having for zero poverty. And what has he done in that? First and foremost, to deal with education and the issue of unemployment, we recruited 8,000 teachers. 5,000 were done late last year, and another 3,000 are just being concluded now. Apart from the infrastructural development of the schools, he's giving grants to mission public schools, not just any particular denomination, all the denominations who have public mission schools, which have not been done in the past anyway. And then, of course, you know, when you come to the issue of health sector, like I said, these employed health workers, and then decided to empower the youths by this principle of productive at home, exportable abroad. We looked at that we needed to build a digital tribe. Mr. Governor said in his manifesto that he's going to build a digital tribe. That will be productive at home, exportable abroad. And what have we done with it? We have trained 20,000 people on digital skills. Today, you have what you call the code Anambra, where about 5,000 to 7,000 of them are being trained on coding, software development. And then, of course, another one is the one you to skill, where we reskilled graduates, reskilled people who had not been having any basic skill before in different sections. And after skilling 5,000 of them, they were given grants that spanned 500,000 naira each person. Two billion was spent on that. Another 2.5 billion was provided as uh, soft uh, microcredit loans to them. So when you talk about that, the fact that these youths have been touched, the fact that their lives have been turned around, not just in terms of skilling them, but in terms of empowering them. And of course, another one we're doing is the palm oil coconut revolution. Intends to be able to provide 350,000 households with some form of empowerment that turns them into millionaires. And I mean it, millionaires, because you know the cost of what palm oil cake is, palm kernel cake and palm oil, and what the state is doing is to empower homes. Some homes will get about 15 to 20 coconut seedlings and palm oil seedlings, oil palm seedlings. And these seedlings are ceilings that will fruit in about three years. So we're expecting that, that will, the value chain system will also pro propel some form of economic transformation for them. Already last year, we've done 120,000 households. This year, we're doing another 100,000 households. And these are things that are aimed and targeted at achieving zero poverty for an ambassador. When you and and Dr. Obiogulu, apologies again that I, I'm coming in, coming in as you reel out these achievements. But for every time, either you or a member of the cabinet of Dr. 
um, Chukumba Soludo speaks, or, or even himself, um, there are those who go on that such, such um, uh, videos and comment and say some of these things are not true. Um, they say that, look, he hasn't even done much. When you compare him to someone like um, the governor of Abia, and I know that you have said that, you know, you're not here to compare, but it's inevitable. Um, so they say, look, for someone like Governor Oti of Abia State, he doesn't even begin to compare. Not to think of, you know, you have mentioned someone like uh, the former governor of Abia, Anambra State, uh, Peter Obi, who many believe is still the best, best thing that has happened to the state today. Well, you see, uh, there will always be opposition in politics. And what I want to ask you is, since you are positioning or positing their own side, can you tell me what the governor of Abia State, with all due respect, has done that when you put side by side with what we've done in Anambra State, we'll say that he has done better? I mean, what I see them do, showing on social media is the fact that he's using Julius Beja. And I don't mean to run down Julius Beja. I mean, we've seen the roads they've also done. You're aware of the road, on which you're aware of the road that was done. We've seen parts of it go bad. So it's not about using a big name. It's about achieving much with less. And that is the mantra, to achieve much with less. And the Mr. Governor is insisting that we must promote local contractors. We must promote made in Anambra. And that's why you see, from the first day, his official cars and the official cars of everyone in government is made in Anambra or made by an Anambra man who is in Nigeria assembling cars. So, I mean, I, like I keep saying, I don't want to go into comparison. What we want to do is, this is what we've done. And when you say that these persons challenge what we've done, what, what have they challenged? I've just mentioned 5,000 teachers recruited. I can give you their names and phone contacts. I've just told you that 3,000 more have been concluded this month. I've told you about the 500 medical doctors and nurses. These are people who are alive. The other day, they couldn't contain what had been done. They said there was a road that collapsed. And the one of them came and said roads were collapsing over a number of states. I mean, I've sent you the clip. Play it. The very play they said it collapsed. Apparent nonsense. So how do you then react to, to the, Dr. Biogbolu, how do you then react to the Anambra State chapter? Um, just a minute, Dr. Biogbolu, how do you then react to the Anambra State chapter of the People's Democratic Party? Um, they, they have expressed disappointment in Governor Soludo's performance for the last two years. Um, they have also described it as a disaster. And then they talked about local governments, they talked about security and the state capital, Okar itself. Well, you know, in campaign, when people, why they've started this is that they started early campaign. They believe, I'm a politician also, they believe that in politics, with the amount of work Mr. Governor has done, that if you don't start trying to stop him now, that he will run away with a second time, unchallenged. But what I am faced about is the lies that they concord just to be able to market the opposition, which in this case is ABGA. When I was there in PDP, some of us, we never used this manner of campaign. This is a campaign of calumny. This is a campaign that, I mean, people who are irresponsible, they have forgotten that you want to run the state. You want to say you are a governor of a number of states. Now, what do you achieve when you finish running down the state and you assume office? What state are you going to govern? Who are the investors going to come? They started with insecurity. Then they showed that records have shown that gunshot reported wounds in hospital has gone down by 84%. Then they left security. They went to roads. <laughs> and then the roads are there. Places that could not be reached before. I'll give you an example. In 1992, when I went on campaign, I joined Mr. Governor then, the erstwhile governor, Ezefe, Governor Ezefe, on campaign to Umunze. It took us three hours. It was a three-hour journey from Oka to Umunze. Today, that same journey is 25 minutes with what Mr. Governor has done. The man see from my route. You have another 26.7 kilometers of Amansi 
Oba Family Road. Oba Family hadn't been assessed for years. They'd never seen any road in, since Adam and Eve was created. Hello? I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Since Adam and Eve were, was, were created, they had never seen any road. Are these the people you tell them that Mr. Governor is not performing? You go to Oka, Oka that we always said was not befitting of a capital. Oka is transformed today with Dwarka Ridge roads. I mean, I need to invite you. It's not a question of saying nothing. You just say it on social media. The people, the beneficiaries are happy. The beneficiaries are saying this is a governor they have never seen. I'll just send you video clips. People expressing their joy. And then, can you imagine a state capital for 30 years? We don't have a lodge, a government house. And that jinx has been broken. Mr. Governor is there. In the next one year, the government house will be ready with the lodge. I mean, where can I start from? Where? Look at Opoku. Let them go to Opoku and walk on the streets of Opoku and tell Opoku that Soluda hasn't done anything. I'm sure they'll know what will happen to them. These are people who have never seen street lights. The whole place is flooded with street lights. 25,000 solar street lights have been installed in Anambra State by Mr. Government Administration. 25,000. Hmm. I give you the name. When I was in opposition in PDP in those days, my problem with some of these governors, my governors, you was I always told them, you said you have built road. Tell us the distance you have built. But this government will list the road and give you the distance. So I would like them to say that these 450 kilometers you said you have ordered are false. Or this uh, 247 kilometers you said you have done is false. That is the kind of responsible opposition they should be. To mm. create havoc where there's no havoc. Talking about responsible opposition, I, I, and you also mentioned Okpoko. Um, I remember, I think it was last month, where the, government, the governor talked about um, refusing to construct, is it Umoke, the street in Okpoko community uh, uh, because it's, it was an area represented by, I think it was Noble Igwe, who then was in the opposition. Oh. Uh, some would say, look, you are talking about responsible opposition. Shouldn't the governor has, had fixed that road even before Noble Igwe defected to the governor's party? When did Noble Igwe defect? Noble Igwe, as far as I'm concerned, is still today PDP. I think he's deputy minority leader. And Noble Igwe is representing the whole of Ward 6, uh, the whole of uh, Opoko, not just Ward 6, where he comes from. And it is in Opoko where he's representing that the governor has put 15 kilometers of road. Noble Igwe, I saw him the day the governor came to commission the 12.7. He was ecstatic. He was happy. He was elated a member of PDP. My dear, Mr. Governor is not interested in party. He says that our own is one agenda, one people, one state. No one should be left behind. That is the motto of Abga. You don't leave anyone behind. He is not from the north. He is from the south. But the five general hospitals he's putting together is in the north, where his predecessor came from. Because these are places that have not witnessed development. Nzam is in the north. Opoko is in the north. Agule Rotu is in the north. These are places that Ulubanasa, you saw him travel by river. He was the first governor since the creation of Adam and Eve to step foot on Ulubanasa. And he went on motorbike, on keke, on foot to get to the reception journey. So I'm sorry. I know what it takes to be in the opposition. I know that this is one governor, one government that seems to be, their mistakes are very few. But they just have to up their game. Because at the end of the day, it's for the people of Anambra State. It's not for me, it's not for Soludo, it's not for any one person. It's for the people of Anambra State. And my sister, I can tell you that when I look back to Anambra in 1991 and Anambra of today, there has been phenomenal growth. Phenomenal growth. 
mm. and more to still come. With the new building code, a new OCA 2.0, a new Onitra 2.0, new cities being built, planned and built. We have land banks. The governor has been picking up land banks to make sure that the future, that the government can still expand. There's a new industrial city in Obodji. There's the greatest, largest indoor pharmaceutical warehouse in Opa. And these are places coming up. That will bring economic transformation for our state. Now you look at what we're doing. Like he says, he says he wants to turn Anambra from a departure lodge to a destination lounge. Why would we say that? Because in the past, people were living in Anambra in droves. Today, <laughs> the cost of property in Anambra has gone up. People are listening. Because the governor has also started on what you call the PPCP model, the public-private community partnership where he's encouraging people of well, who are well-to-do to come in and help government and provide amenities also for their people. Because government cannot do it alone. And people are answering the call. People are doing carrying 16 kilometers of road in their town. One is doing four kilometers, one is doing one kilometer. Mm. And this is because the, that is what the governor is preaching, to support the government in what they're doing. Yes, of course, not everybody will like it. Not everybody will be supportive. We understand that. But what we are saying to them is that we need to work together. Let the criticism be constructive. Let the criticism be constructive. Let's come on together. Because Anambra is a home. We have no other home than Anambra. Mm. All right, so I, I, we, we, Dr. Biobolo, we'll take a break now. Um, when we return, I, I have just one more question on the Noble Igwe issue. We'll then talk about security. Um, and other developments in Anambra State. Uh, stay with us, everyone. <laughs>